Xenix is the team that this player plays on. I won't say his name until the Street Fighter guy does. It is... Xenix Koka. There you go, Xenix Koka. One of the few remaining Xenix players in uh, GSL in general. That's a team that used to have just a ton of guys. Lately been kind of fading from prominence a little bit. Made well, it to this round last season. See if he can do better. Yep. Beat Squirtle in the last round to advance. Yeah, really, really destroyed Squirtle too. A lot of people were surprised by that. I was one of them. But he played really well. Yeah. We haven't seen much of his CBT yet though. Yeah. He's only played a few games in the GSL. Against and here's Terran. our Terran player, formerly known as Cute Fo You. Now he's not cute anymore. He's mean. He's MVP Nobles. MVP Nobles. There we go. Nobles. Actually, now that I look at it, Koka hasn't played any games versus Terran, I don't think, in GSL. Yep. He's just, he's one and two from the Zotac team invite. Uh, and actually, the two players he lost to in the no Zotac invite were Bomber, no shame in that, and Nobles. Oh, really? Nobles beat oh. him in January in the team league. Huh. Uh, the the Zotac League, so a little so bit of a possible get back here for Coca. Definitely some history going on between both of these players. <clears throat> Thanks to LG, Intel, and G Skill for promoting esports, for supporting esports, for making the GSL possible. Gas before pool for Coca and a two racks for Nobles. Oh, looks like the drone squeezes out just in time. Speaking of units coated in butter. That's right, dude. A drone, right. actually, drones are pretty meaty, and there's not yeah. much, uh, you know, not much. Um, you can have like barbecue metal. drone wings. Yeah, drones can know. be pretty tasty, I think, with butter. That's on. That, that's what we're gonna have to do next time for Twitter. Which is the most appetizing-looking StarCraft II unit, and why? Oh, is he gonna block? Nope, he's not gonna block the expansion. Yep. And he's actually not gonna make an expansion. He's gonna make Zerglings instead. Uh, very interesting that he went gas pool. Usually you don't see a lot of Zergs doing that against Terran. A lot of Zergs have been going hatch first or hatch pool and getting their gas a little bit later. So I'm really curious to see where Koka is going to go from this. Well, getting very, a very fast Zergling speed. It's something that no one was doing until July Zerg started doing it. And people were like, oh, hey, like you can actually be a little aggressive and get your early speedlings out. You don't have to worry about marine pressure quite as much. So, a little bit of a smart move, especially considering, well, he didn't know at the time, but there's two racks there, pumping some rings across the map, so it's good he's going to have lings early. More Zerglings uh, running across the map. I always kind of thought Zerglings looked like little hairless rabbits. They kind of pick you know, their claws they kind of do. They, they hippity hop along. Yeah. Claws are like little ears, and they kind of hop. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. I wouldn't want one as a pet. You wouldn't? No. I wouldn't want a rabbit as a pet, actually. Might be hard to house train a Zergling too. You're like, go outside and it just eats you. I like that Overlord there. He's like, I will give my life going into the Terran base to see what he is up to. Hey, there's a command center on the edge. I can live. I got my intel. I can get out. That's right. Only doing as much as is required for him. For the can't, swarm. Can't discredit And that actually was important. He doesn't need really to go in there right now to see what tech's going on because seeing that command center. He knows it's going to be an expansion. There's not any sort of major attack or, or tech going on. He always saw the two barracks, so he knows that there's going to be some Marines. Yeah. And when you see two barracks on the command center, you could assume there's going to be the two gas like we just saw and then the tank projection. So, uh, yeah, very standard opening right now. So far from MVP Nobles, fairly standard opening from his next Coca as well, although not an opening we see quite as much in CVT these days. This is interesting. He's got a dozen Marines. Run it over here. He might be Overlord hunting. Yeah, he certainly could be, and he just and missed one as missed well. Missed one up there. Yeah, he's going to be able to uh, make his zergling, zergling run first. off the tower. If you notice, one thing he did was take a marine and make it run ahead of the other ones. I really like that. That was actually he gives him just a second or two to uh, to uh, kind of adjust to any big zergling attacks or banelings that might be around really early in the game. Two factories going out right now for uh, Nobles, and a lot of times when you see two factories, that suggests. Blue Flame Hellions, although sometimes it also just suggests that they want to get a lot of tanks out. Have to see which Noblesse decides. Yeah, he could even theoretically switch over into, into full mech or bio mech. Yep. Now, uh, the reason you get two factories with Blue Flame Hellions is just because you can put a reactor on, a, on one tech lab on the other, get a ton of Hellions out, do a lot of damage attack with just Marine Hellion. Or if, if you don't want to make that uh, reactor, which takes a few cycles to kick in with That's the two true. factories, you can make a lot of Hellions anyway. Yeah, you can do it either way. 
And actually, it's Noblesse blue flame hellion. rallying some more. There's the blue flame upgrade being started in a couple hellions right now. And, and Roach Warren for Coca. Good uh, response there. I think he kind of suspected something. Did he get a glimpse of those two factories? I think he might have. I'm not don't sure. I think so. No. no, he didn't know. He okay. will soon, though. That Overlord has gone back to giving its life mode. And. You will see it. Roaches are a good thing it. to get nope. to, though, anyway. Actually, just went in, saw the gas. Man, that is a cowardly <laughs> overlord there. He's new. He doesn't want to make a big, uh, you know, splash yet. He just wants to get into a little bit, just as much as is required. Does and not want to make the big splash of his yep. innards falling onto the ground when he explodes. That's also death. a big splash. And oh, actually, there. Oh, that overlord made a big splash. Another overlord dying up at the north there. But noblesse, I like how he's just camping that tower. Um, he doesn't have stim, so actually, if anything comes after those marines, he's going to be. Uh, no, and, and really was poor condition, but Coca's playing so smart right now, getting the Roach Warren, getting his Baneling Nest, getting his Lair, really preparing in every way for anything Terran could throw at him. That's a, a good thing to do, you know, of course, Zerk. He may not end up really needing the Roach Warren that much. He's producing a few Roaches right now, but that may be all he decides to get. But it's good just to kind of have it. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> it is definitely good to have that around. It looks like... He might even be thinking about getting a flank going on or something. He's got his Zerglings off to the side, his Roach is at the bottom. And when that Bane match finishes... Oh, Comsat sees those Roaches, oh, sees the Banelings morphing, and wisely turns around. Yeah, doesn't want to attack right into that right now. The Roaches, of course, would be a huge, huge hassle for him. Armory going up as well, so it looks like probably going to be a bit of a mech build from Noble S. Getting siege mode as well, and Stim. So largely marine tank with some Hellions, possibly Thor 2 thrown in. Ooh, drop being researched right now Ooh. by Koka. I like that a lot. He could drop Banelings on the army. He could do a lot of things with that. Yeah. He could also Roach drop, which is something that we saw. Oh, who was doing that was earlier? That oh, a lot of Banelings taken out by those Hellions. Whoa. I think that was Revival that, that did Roach Drops. Yeah, I believe that was TSL Revival. Yeah, I was doing Roach Drops, and it worked pretty well. These Zerglings are oh in serious no. trouble. Lots of Blue Flame Hellions coming in. They can easily take those Zerglings out, yep. especially if they're heading out them at, at that angle. You saw how all those streams hit a few Zerglings. Yep. Took them out very quickly. Roaches are going to chase them away. Don't cross the streams with Ghost Busting, but with Hellions, it's perfectly OK. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. And I like how he does keep those Hellions alive. Make sure he gets them out of the way of the Roaches. In fact, he needs to run them out of the way before they get... There he goes. Um, because then they're going to be very useful later on. It means that when the attack happens, whether he's defending or attacking, when those Zerglings run in to try and take out your tanks and force your Marines back mm -hmm. uh, so that the Banelings can get in closer and everything, the Hellions could just stand their ground around the tanks and, and keep the Zerglings from mobbing them. So oh, they're, they're useful Roach. to have around. Yeah, absolutely. Hellion's coming in again. He's going to sneak around the back. Oh. And he's going to kill a lot of drones with oh, that. Oh, no, the drones are up. up. One more shot and all of the drones will die. Oh, Whoa. he does lose those Hellions. Barely defending there. A lot of drones. One hit away from death. Yeah. Those are the luckiest drones ever, man. Those drones just won the life lottery. I, You know, I really don't think... I was just talking about how he needs to keep them alive. I really don't think that was worth it. He, no. lost, he lost six Hellions for like eight drones. Or something like that, and well, yeah, that kind of is technically kind of pays for itself, yeah. but he oh, can just drone back up some again. Roach is being loaded up into Overlord, so it will be a Roach drop. Overlord speed kicking in, hitting the afterburners. Whenever something is slow and then gets fast, I always like to say, "Punch it, Chewy." There they go. <laughs> and we saw Revival do this to pretty good effect against Slayer's Ryung, I believe it was. Ryung did win that match, but Revival definitely showed us something pretty cool. Yeah, Overlord's those coming out as well. He could drop them on the tanks as well, I suppose. Yeah, those are mostly roaches, but some banelings as well yep. in those overlords. He needs to make sure the overlords don't die, though. The front overlords are empty to soak up damage, and he's going to be able to drop all over the tanks of Reef. Everything exploding to acid from roaches and banelings. He might be able to hold this off, but he just did a ton of damage. And actually, wow, those two siege tanks in the back. Yep. Didn't really get roached on. Oh, he's going to lose a good amount of overlords on the way out, too. This could be pretty bad. One going down and another going down. Okay, only two overlords, but still. That's a good amount. It was hard to watch. 
Um, and the drop immediately loaded up. Those two tanks in the back really saved no yeah. less there. If he well, had not had those... He dropped those roaches a little bit too early, I feel. Maybe he'd had some Zerglings, I don't know. But either way, the, the, he didn't target the tanks down. And the roaches, yeah, he, he dropped them kind of early, so they were in front of the Marines. Not in the range of the... Uh, not, rather, under the range of the tanks, so they were still able to shell them. Drop coming in now from Noble S. It has not been spotted yet. It's got a... Looks like Koka does have a good amount to defend, though. All right, so this drop's not really going to do anything. Needs to pull back. And no third base from either player yet, except for that one. My minimap is off at the bottom. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. There's actually a third base. There's the next Coca. There it is. Right. Yep. No Zerg player on this game, except for that one. That's, that's right. <laughs> no tanks in this game, except for those. And no factory starports, turrets, marines, reactors. Overlords. Except for all those ones that are there. Grass. Um, so now that we've established this is a Zerg versus Terran, I like the fact that he knows that oh, he did enough damage to take that third base, but it might not actually be good at all because the Marines are going to slaughter those drones with some nice stutter stepping. Yep. And they go back for the hatchery. Is he going to be able to get the hatchery before the roaches and Bainley get know. in there? Loading no, he's up. not. Everybody knew about that hatchery except for me. It's the next Coca <laughs> making him pay for it. Wow, you know what? He's Another got drops coming speed. in. He's got drops, but he has no other lair tech. He doesn't have an infestation pit. Wow. No, no real upgrades yet either, right? I think he has roach speed. I don't believe. Uh, I don't believe Coca has any like uh, weapon or armor upgrades no, at this he's, point. No, he's got none no. of that stuff. Right. Oh, oh, run, Bane Links! All right. Nothing really happening there. The cowardly overlord, in case y'all were wondering, just just he's, was cowardly once again. He's still alive. Big attack coming out from Noble S right now. Yep. Now Coco does have his overlords loaded up once again. This time mostly with banelings, yep. and only a few roaches. So gonna do a little bit better dropping earlier on the bio. And he's gonna need to be really careful. We've seen a lot of Terran players get caught because they didn't look for what was ahead. They didn't get that siege up in time and lost because of it. We've even seen players like Nana lose. So will Noble S look ahead before he moves out? Oh, he's going to spot it with the Roach. Oh, those Marines getting owned by Banelings. Oh, wow. And, and here, here comes he a comes bit of a in. drop. There are he Marines there. He's going to stim and try and kill the Overlords, but the front ones, again, don't have any of the enemies falling back. Dropping a little bit too early, but the there's drop. so many Roaches. Nice Roaches coming in the front. The drop's doing uh, not a lot of damage, but forcing him back. And there nice. weren't, weren't a lot of reads there to begin with. Oh, nice. The Overlord being picked up by the medevac, and there's nothing that can hit it. The Thor. The benefit being that the, the Thor pilot can yeah. just look out the window and laugh as the roach is running around underneath it. Yeah, but he won't be laughing because Zen X Coca Thor is going to attack overlord. the main base. Yeah, this might actually finish him off here. He's got a lot of roaches there. There's nothing in those Overlords, but they can't stop the damage with so many roaches there. Tanks in the back doing lots of damage, and he can protect those tanks. He might be able to hold this off after a while. Really needs to micro those roaches in. They're taking a lot of damage from the siege tanks right oh, now. Oh, no. Bane Lynx coming in. Actually killed very quickly. And Noblesse yeah. holds with those tanks in the back really being heroes. Yeah, the roaches not microing in like you really should on an attack like that. And Marines dropping in the natural. Drones forced to fight, then forced to flee. Then Zerglings forced to fight. Roaches forced to fight. And the Marines finally loaded up into the medevac. Wow. Both players losing nice a lot in all these situations. I mean, normally at this point, you'd expect the Harvesters to be up in the, like, 50 or 60 range. Right now, Zerg has 35 drones, 42 SCVs for the Terran player, who's also getting up a planetary fortress at the right side of the map. So, Overlord kind of low econ it. situation. They both kind of traded, ended up about even. Now they're dropping cleaned up pretty easily by his next Koka. And another drop coming down to third. Noble S really, really putting the pressure on Koka this game with all these drops. And this is this is what happens when you've got no Spire tech. He doesn't have yeah. infestors. He, exactly. doesn't have a, he doesn't have a Spire. He can't make anything to deal with these medevacs other than Queens. And he's getting really harassed by it. And as a result, down to 28 drones, which is not good at all for two and a half bases. Yeah, a lot of times in games like this, the Mutalists are out. The drops are basically shut down. The map control belongs to Zerg. But this game, Noble S really able to keep map control, just like you're saying, with all these drops because of that lack of spire. This queen going to go down. 
Now oh, it's going to be lost. Oh, losing queen. a lot of drones. And another drop down at the natural. Oh my gosh. Marines falling from the heaven like rain. And that is not a good thing at all. Another big force outside the natural. Noblesse looking absolutely great right now. Not terribly far ahead in the supply, but the uh, third base is gone at now. The front of Noblesse's base, though. A lot of roaches in those overlords are going to drop on top of everything. Actually dropping in front of everything, not as effective. And it looks like he's going to clean up. And GG coming from Coca. Noblesse getting a little bit lucky that Coca decided to like do this big drop to drop on top of everything and then yeah. dropping not on top of everything. Dropping in front so he can kill it anyway. Um, so a clever move, but he kind of panicked and was like, oh my god, my overlords are going to die if I don't drop now. Yep. And just dropped everything out in not the best position um, in each of the battles. Yeah, I mean... What? I mean, he, he did get some drops. I don't want to completely say it was, it was pointless. Uh, he, he did do some damage, especially in the first battle, mm -hmm. when he wasn't expecting as much, and there were Banelings in there, but wasn't as effective as it could have been. And if it was as effective as it could have been, he would have won that game earlier. Well, that's the thing. I kind of feel like what we saw as the next Koka just try, we saw Revival do better last week. And that yeah. wasn't even enough to win his match. So the Roach Drop, a nice idea, but not quite as well executed as it could have been. Let's see if he can execute a little bit better. The next map is going to be Zelnaga Fortress. We're going to get in the game soon. Yeah, Zelnaga Fortress, um, a three-player map. And it's actually the one where we saw Revival doing those roach drops. And uh, we'll see if he does something similar this time. Definitely a different style of Zerg versus Terran than normal. And uh, we'll see if he continues that or maybe goes back to some Spire tech, some normal stuff. Let's find yeah. out.